The Black and White Network proudly presents Moms Across America, a new program where women can speak their minds openly and freely without fear of reprisals. Moms Across America is about the issues of the day confronting America from the mom's point of view. And now, here are the moms. Welcome to Moms Across America. We've got a great show for you this December 15th, 2021. I'm Kathleen Fitzgerald with my co-host, Vicki Tonkins. We are going to be talking about inflation for the first half of the show. And the second half will be about the abortion issue. Um, Vicki, what have you got for us today? Okay, it was so funny when, when you and I got together and we were talking about you know the different things that we we're gonna have on the show today. Um, I had just written an email uh, to about 15,000 people uh, talking about the very subject we're talking about today, inflation. Um, and you know, you know inflation is happening. You feel it, you see it. Every time you go to the gas station, every time you go pick up groceries, every time you look for Christmas presents for your grandchildren or your children or nephews and all that, I didn't realize how much inflation. So, since 1982, the inflation rate, well, let me, let me back up. The U.S. inflation rate rose 6.8% just in 2021. And that's the highest increase since 1982. I got to tell you, I'm feeling it at the pump and at the grocery store. I mean, I can see items that you know, used to be just, oh, that I know how much that is. You walk in and, and now you go into the store and some of these things are almost twice as much as what they were that when you got them last year. And I'm like, okay, can I get this now or do I have to wait to next time? <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. And if I'm doing that, I know a lot of other people are doing it as well. And so I'm very disturbed, 6.8% the highest increase since 1982. That's a long time ago. What do you think about that? Well, that's pretty disturbing. I mean, what I'm seeing out there, I looked around and I'm hearing also that pork prices, uh, I've got somebody who loves, loves pork and uh, they said it went from like, Two fifty nine a pound, and they're seeing it six ninety nine and eight ninety nine a pound, yep. and that's just one one item. You know, I'm wondering, Vicky. So I did a little research, and I came, I saw an article talking about big freight, and how this the shipping supply chain has been um, kind of hijacked. It seems like they're all pointing to big freight. So now we've got big pharma, big mm. ag. Now we got big freight and we're all kind of realizing that, hmm, what's going on at the ports? And I found out that the largest port in, uh, is in LA and they've got these giant cargo ships out there. I guess they said like right now, 57 yeah. giant cargo ships. And they were saying some of these cargo ships are as big as the Empire State Building. And they can't go into some of these smaller ports. Uh, we are, we're hearing some of the, what was it, Texas and some of the other um, ports are saying, hey, come, come over. Florida? Uh, Florida? Yeah. Yeah. And, and one port was even saying, we, you know, you, everything's like less than one day's drive to get to these supplies. We can get these supplies to the people, but it looks like they can't dock to get these big giant freight liners. So how much is this being blamed on COVID and how much is really being orchestrated? Because what I'm hearing is Americans can afford it. We've got enough money. We can afford to pay these higher prices. And I think that's kind of pretty harsh because I don't think there's that many Americans out there that really have as much disposable cash as the government's saying. I mean, even right. Jen Psaki was saying, oh, Americans can afford to, to pay 
for this and the inflational costs. Don't you think it's funny how these people can tell us how much money we have, but they don't know what's in our account? <laughs> I well, think they that's sure serious. they're working on that. Yeah, they're working on one. Well, that's what's true. In our <laughs> that's true. That's another show. Um, also, uh, I was reading just some some quotes from uh, Joe Biden, and it is it's all if it wasn't so disgusting, it would be comical. He's basically saying at the bottom of all of this, all the 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 things that are happening at the ports and, and not being able to get supplies in and all that kind of stuff. Guess what the reason is? COVID. It's all COVID's fault. Did you know COVID has become a person? <laughs> it's COVID's fault. Everything that happens is COVID's fault. Why are why is the Biden administration not taking responsibility for what they're doing to the American people? I mean, think about it. When President Trump was in, we had we we were free. We had our own oil, we had our own gas, we were we had our, we were getting all these supplies to us with no no issues. No issues, Kathleen. And now all of a sudden, it's COVID's fault. That's the reason we can't get these supplies. Well, I think Mr. Biden may have forgotten the fact that he cut off our oil supplies here in our country. And now he's asking OPEC to help us. I think he's forgotten about that. I think he's trying to get our oil and gas from other countries instead of us doing it ourselves. He is the problem. He is the reason for inflation. Didn't he shut down the, the big pipeline right yeah, in the beginning did. that uh, tried to, so hard to get going? And mm -hmm. I think that somebody was saying that the oil reserves, you know, you can go through those oil reserves fairly quickly and it's right. not a sustainable situation. And then I've also done a little research knowing that it looks like oil is, is not um, going to run out, but it, they give the appearance that there's a shortage of oil, just like they do water. I mean, that's another, another show in itself, but yes. it looks to me like there's a concentrated effort by uh, the global network to get Americans to get used to doing with less. Because I, I know that that Build Back Better comes from the global network, which I would call, you know, the elites, the people that are pulling on the strings that own everything. Apparently they own, they must own um, big freight, right? Mm -hmm. uh, obviously they do. And so if somebody's owning big freight and they're not allowing the supplies to get to us, they are creating a supply chain crisis. And it's not on COVID, but they're blaming it on COVID. That's what it looks like to me. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing it. Go ahead. I was going to say, have you noticed that um, many Democrat states, they just don't know how to govern? Everything they do turns to a mess. I don't know if it's because they just love chaos or what. And they never take responsibility. I've, I've noticed this. Every news show I listen to, every article I read, I noticed they never take responsibility. They're, 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 what's that saying? They're cutting off their nose in spite of their face. That's what it looks like is happening. I mean, because gasoline prices, 58.1% increase, the largest increase over 12 months since 1980. I can remember when we were paying less than $2 a, a gallon when President Trump was in office. And I got to tell you, seeing it almost four is, oh, it hurts. It hurts. Well, I know when I went down to California in October, as soon as I crossed the border, gasoline was a dollar more. Yep. I had to do a double take. As I, I thought, what? Is that diesel? Is that a diesel price? But no, <laughs> right as I got over the border from Oregon into California. Mm -hmm. And so... I know that oil prices and gas prices are manipulated right. and there's lots of taxes and different things like that. But we are looking at, they're saying, you know, five or six dollars a gallon coming up at some point. And if you've got a big rig, 
that's you know double or triple your gas bill yeah and i know that they don't really want us to be driving around in big vehicles that are not green right and i know that there was a big hit on suburbans a while back i i drive a suburban um and uh not all the time i have a tiny little 500 dollar uh honda <laughs> that's my backup little rig it's a 1994 and it's got 275,000 miles on it there but you man go. it gets yeah it gets good gas mileage but i know that there was a big hit on big rigs and we have to remember that you know a lot of our supply chain is these big trucker rigs i can say that on 84 just right over across the river we have still a lot of people a lot of truckers on the road and I've never been so happy in my life to see them on the road. It used to be, oh, there's a trucker, you know, he's on the, but now I'm like, yay, there's the trucks. And, and if their got, gas prices are going up, Kathleen, what's, what's that going to do for the product that they're, they're bringing across the country? That's going to be another increase for us. So basically, let me tell you what I'm calling this. I wrote this down. Uh, it was from my little, oh, I put it over here, sorry. Uh, it's from my... Um, uh, email that I was telling you that, that I'm going to be sending out that's talking a little bit about inflation. Mm -hmm. And so um, food is up over 6.5% this year. And they keep saying that they're not going to tax anybody that makes over four, uh, anyone who makes less than $400,000 a year. Right. Um, but if food has gone up 6.5%, that is what I call the inflation tax on America, because all of us are paying that tax. And that's wow. what Mr. Biden needs to understand. We're all paying that tax. Wow. Well, we should end it there because we're just about ready for a break. Would you like to say anything closing and then lead us to the break, Vicki? No, let's just hope that very soon uh, we'll start seeing a decrease in some of these prices. I'm not holding my breath, but we can hope. And we will see you guys back here in just a minute. Vaccine companies tell us their products will be 95% effective. How do you know if you're in the 95 or the 5% group? Congressman Steve Lynch, who had the two-shot regimen of a vaccine, just tested positive. You may not know which group you're in, but in either case, you need to have the strongest immune system possible. You need to get CV acute for short-term protection and CV defense for long-term support for a healthy immune system. Take charge of your health care. Go to empoweryourself.info to order these important supplements. Welcome back, folks, to Moms Across America. We're happy to be here to relay some of this very important information. Uh, the, la the last half of the show, we were talking about inflation, and we just wanted to wrap it up because we've got some uh, new information that came right straight from uh, the producer that the, um, the, the production uh, the producer price index, mm -hmm. he's trying to explain it to me, is um, up 9.6%, which means that we, we have to pay more for the raw materials, the people that are making um, the, the, you know, the stuff that we use. And so the raw materials, um, he, you know, he was trying to explain it to me. This is not my, my expertise, but it looks like we could be paying double digits for uh, things in the new year. And when he was talking, I was thinking, wow, um, my intuitive hit was that we're gonna be okay through the holidays for a while, and, and, but then after the first of the year, it's gonna just hit us like a ton of bricks. Right. Everything's gonna go double, it's gonna be double what we paid for. And so we're talking about the gas price, and uh, would you like to comment on your, your gas price? Sure, I, I drive a little SUV. It's not, it's not a big one, but it's really enough for me and you know, carrying some of my friends around. And uh, I really, I have to budget when it comes to filling up my tank. So what I do, I have this little trick that I do, where is I do not let my tank get below half because volume and space and all that kind of stuff kind of comes into play in your tank and so when you keep it at half um and then you fill up you're not paying as much as, the, as at the tank so 
you know, a year or so ago, I w- it was taking me about 20 bucks, you know, or maybe between 18 and $20 when I, when I did that, when I would wait, you know what, I'd do it before half a tank. Now, even though I'm still doing the same thing, it's costing me anywhere from 25 to 30. So even doing the little trick that I've been doing for all these years, it's still, I'm still seeing an increase in my gas bill. Well, it's a good thing to do. I mean, some of the prep information is always suggesting keep your gas tanks, you know, yeah. when it when it goes down to half, you should fill it up in case there's, you know, an emergency. But I know that ever since Biden administration came in, my gas bill has been anywhere from 35 to 40. And then if I go to California, it's even more uh, to fill up my tank. So I know that people have to budget now in order to make things work and it's gonna get pretty tricky for people. And so do you have any suggestions? And then we should go into the next topic, but do you have any suggestions for, for people out there, what they can do to uh, offset some of the um, rising prices that we're experiencing out there? Well, that's, that's you know that was one of my little tricks that I do. Uh, my brother told me about that years ago, military guy. He told me, he's telling me different ways I could save some money. And it works, like I said, with the volume and the space that you have in your tank, you know, the more gas you have in there, less it's going to, you know, go out. So that's, that's one of the tricks that people can start trying and see if it'll save them a few dollars. And then one of the other things that I do, things that I use all the time, I try to buy in bulk. So if you can get it in bulk, you're not going to the store as often. So that's a couple of suggestions that I have and some little tricks that people can try to save a little money. You know, we're all having to do it right now. Well, according to the Biden administration, Americans have plenty of money to, <laughs> you know, cover these costs, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's move on into um, something that many of us do not like talking about. This is something that I have been researching since I was 15 years old. Uh, I'm gonna give you a little history, a little background that I'm aware of about abortion. And I noticed when I was doing some uh, other research and I was looking at different definitions and things like that, I was really disturbed that most of the articles and most of the information out there about abortion, they have totally erased Margaret Sanger's name. She was the founder of Planned Parenthood. And they have totally scrubbed her name from a lot of these things. And I was, I was very disturbed by that. And I think I read this to you when we were doing our prep work, uh, Kathleen. I used to teach um, on the college level. I taught um, critical thinking. And one of the things I always told my students, be careful when you're reading an article You need to first, who is writing the article? What is their motivation in writing that article? And where is their source? That was one of the things I absolutely required in my classes. Um, So I went to the number, the number one, when you put in a word for a definition, the number one site that comes up is Wikipedia. The most unreliable source for any type of information. But I wanted to read this because I think it's important. Wikipedia defined abortion as a termination of a pregnancy by removal or expulsion of an embryo or fetus. They never call it a baby. And then they had another definition and this really disturbed me. It says an abortion that occurs without intervention is known as a miscarriage. And I'm telling you right now, That is the most asinine thing I've ever heard in my life. A miscarriage is not an abortion. And to see that on the Wikipedia site is very disturbing because I know that a lot of young people go to Wikipedia as their source of information. And that, my friend, is misinformation. Just wanted to point that out. So, yeah, but Miss Margaret Sanger. Her whole goal was eugenics, basically. Uh, She was a racist. She was a member of the KKK. Her whole goal was to exterminate the less desirables, as she put it. 
uh, those who didn't deserve to procreate. And those people included Blacks, Latinos, the disabled, and Jews. That was her goal to eliminate those races. Well, those, those people that you named are um, definitely part of the protected group of people that they really want. The, the people that are, you know, marginalized, the ones they have to protect, right. sounds like it's the ones that they're focusing on. And uh, it's all doublespeak. <laughs> it is. It is. So what you're saying is that they're trying to correlate or abortion is a miscarriage and a miscarriage is an abortion and kind of muddy the waters so people yes. are not clear with what's happening especially young people because like i said that was on wikipedia and that's what young people use if i was a, if i was teaching right now and a child came into my classroom and their 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 source was wikipedia i would say do the project over because it's not a good source you know you talk about um where you get your articles and stuff. So I brought up, like I've got a New York Times dated December 14th. It's a brand new article. And um, they're talking about um, the abortion issue. And they say in here in the New York Times that most of the abortions are coming from women that are already have children that are older. Hmm. It says that right in here. And uh, I think it's like some of the women in these states would travel to places where abortion remained legal, you know, and it's a whole article here. But uh, basically, from my, my understanding is, they're trying to say that abortion, I heard uh, Vice President Harris, and um, even Rachel Maddow, I listened a little bit to of her, they are correlating the abortion rights to the constitutional right. And they're saying that you know, you are blocking my constitutional right to have an abortion. <laughs> so they're trying to say that there's a some sort of constitutional right to abortion and that they are, you're denying us our, our constitutional right. What, what do you say about that? I mean. <laughs> well, I think that's ridiculous. That's not what our constitution says. It says everyone has a right. And I have to say, well, what about the right of that baby? What about the right of that child? I think that's being ignored. Um, and I'm going to step back into what I was kind of alluding to with Margaret Sanger here a little bit too, Kathleen, because uh, I think it's important that people know the, motivated, the motivation of the woman who founded Planned Parenthood. She, found, she is the founder of Planned Parenthood. She was a member of the KKK. Her whole motive was to, uh, she saw Jews and Blacks as weeds that need to be exterminated. One of her quotes is this, and this is what she said about the black community. We do not want word to get, to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population and the minister because they thought, because the, back in these times, the pastors had the most influence in the black community. And she said, and the minister is the man who can straighten out that idea if it ever occurs to any of their more rebellious members. Basically, they're she was talking about, you know, getting abortion clinics into the Black community and how this is good for the Black community. And they wanted to use the minister to push that narrative uh, in the Black community so that they can achieve their goal of genocide, basically, of the Black race. And one of the other things that most people don't know about, uh, and I had talked to our producer about this earlier, um, the black race is the only race in America that I have seen who has stayed stagnant between 13 and 15% of the population. Stagnant, we, we haven't moved. And I started doing some research about abortion and I know we have some other things in the black community can, that contribute to that, but not on the scale of abortion because in the black community, a woman is more likely to have abortion 50 times more than any other race. And so considering we're only 13 to 14%, that is huge. And looking at the numbers over the years and trying to figure out why we are staying so stagnant, I realized had we let our children be born, 
we would be more at anywhere from 35 to 40 percent of the population. And that is very disturbing. And I need people to understand, moms, I need you to understand the motivation of people when it comes to the abortion issue. And I think the black community has lost its sight and has, ha has lost an understanding of the motivation of Planned Parenthood. And we all know Planned Parenthood is all about the money for them. But uh, I just wanted to share that because a lot of people don't know. And I would, I would strongly suggest that people go out and they do their research on Margaret Sanger and who she was. She was not a very pleasant woman. Wow. wow. That's pretty That's important pretty information. Nice. Well, I'm getting some yes. feedback. Um, I don't know, but we are at the end of this 12 minute segment. So I would like to say we should probably end the show. And there's so much to talk about. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> we could go on. Uh, we will have to touch back on this abortion issue um, at another show. Meanwhile, we'd like everybody to stay safe and focus on the important things, your family, friends, yeah. buy locally and support US made and support uh, your constitution and this show. And if you like what you're seeing here, please, you can check out more Moms Across America at blacksandwhites.us. That's blacksandwhites.us. You can see uh, previous shows and this show as well. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you, Vicki. And thank you everyone and God bless you. Yeah, thank you all for being with us today, and we'll see you next time. And remember, moms across America, you are America. If you are interested in reaching our vast black and white network audience with your products or services, then contact Hollis Media Group at 1-855-673-8635. That's 1-855-673-8635 for more information on this great opportunity.